Welcome back to another first impression video. This is Tom and Shivas. And today we have a very interesting car with us. It's the Renault Megane E-Tech. But this is a very interesting system. And it's interesting because, because it's Google. It has Android integrated right at the operating system level. So as confusing as it is, we have Android Auto, but we also have Android Automotive. And that's what this system has. It has Android Automotive, which means the maps are Google Maps. The OS is Google OS. The Assistant is Google Assistant. So it's Google everything. Yeah, so first impressions. I mean, we have tested cars that cost all the way from 40K to 170K. And this has been the fastest system of them all, man. I think, uh, you know, very typically Google, Android, you know, the best thing about Android phones is you get to put different skins on them. So I think this is what mm. we've seen in the Volvo and the Renault Megane Tech. And I think this is a light skin. So it's super snappy and it's even snappier than the, um, you know, car that costs 170k, the luxury car. But at the same time, I was very impressed with the speed of the system. You know, just being able to zoom in and pinch zoom in and see an instant response is just, is just, yeah, absolutely great for me. We had a little discussion about is it a good thing to have Google inside the vehicle or is it a bad thing? And I was pro Google, you were kind of against Google. Yeah. So maybe one or two points uh, for our opinions. The first thing that I felt was, of course, you know, there is a lot of data privacy concerns surrounding Google. And I think this is a huge thing in the personalization space where you need to give data to AI and Google to personalize stuff for you but you also don't want them to misuse it. So compared to other OEMs, my biggest concern with the system is now Google has another way of monitoring me. So is this really something I want? Is this something I'm able to trade off? Is a question that I ask myself and you should ask yourself before you get this car, you know? What do you think? I never looked at it this way. I only looked at it as a convenience aspect that I can have a Google account like we tested and uh, all I have to do is log in and you know all my addresses are saved in the cloud uh, similar to what happens obviously with the uh, BMW or Mercedes but mm -hmm. but in this case you know it's it's Google it's something different you you can add more stuff and it's all integrated into one mm -hmm. although the functions are similar they're yeah. basically the same but it's integrated in something that you've already use daily yeah. and and so I am again on the fence I get the point for the privacy concern but at the same point you're giving up the privacy to to other companies and yeah. I don't know how Google misuses your data this is something a conversation for another time So going back to Google Assistant, here's my final takeaway from this. Although my bigger concern is anti-Google, I really cannot help but be in awe with this system simply because of how snappy it is, how smart Google Assistant is, and really how fast everything can be done. The when I when I can I can conclude this with a pro and a con. The pro is that the system has an answer to a lot of questions. What is the meaning of life? That's a big question. But here's one answer I like. French philosopher Simone de Beauvoir says life has value, so long as one values the lives of others. This would explain why I enjoy helping people so much. It can do miles conversions for you. It can do uh, route navigations to places. I love that when you navigate somewhere, you can tap one button and boom, it's added all the charging stations. My opinion is that these small things really make the overall experience so much better. But for me, the bigger con besides the uh, Google privacy stuff 
is the fact that it struggles to control the car features sometimes vis-a-vis -vis, yeah. uh, it cannot interact with Apple CarPlay you know it cannot sometimes do some seat adjustment settings and I think uh, this is one place where Google really needs to focus its Android automotive and I think they are really uh, striking one level above where Apple is striking or even other OEMs are and striking. And of course the integration between Apple and, and Android and Google yeah. which is non-existent basically. When I ask Google to skip the track it actually exits Apple CarPlay goes into the main menu and says go into Apple CarPlay and do this so you know it's almost a little bit spiteful in my opinion but that's that's an integration that's not something we can control so I hope this changes in the future and I think that that way Google's going to punch one level above a lot of other companies. If you're a Renault fan or you own Renault, you know that there is a media control just behind the steering wheel and it's the same case here. So this is very familiar sound of the blinker. Although it is digital and we can adjust the loudness, it sounds like the conventional blinker in any other Renault uh, vehicle and I'm a bit struggling to say anything negative or positive. It just is a really good car I guess overall. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had any troubles. Did the car turn off? Yeah. In this case we didn't manage to, to freeze it. The ADAS is very, very well built. You can check out the highlights on our website, Screen Studio, where we cover the car fully. It has different multi-sense drive modes, which you can feel a difference with the acceleration or the, or the let's say, engine braking and, or regeneration, as you would like to call it. We can adjust that on the fly with the pedals here uh, on the steering wheel. The displays are really clear, visible. The um, IC is easy to navigate really and it's so big. So, the so views big. are so cool on this. So view, yeah, and it's nicely integrated. We have a little icon of the Megane on the IC and when I press the stop, the stop lights light up on the, on the monitor too. Uh, when the lights turn on in the front, it shows me that I have the lights active. So there's lots of cool hidden features. A 5 out of 10 would be unfair because the system is really good, but giving it 8 out of 10 for overall, I wouldn't. Uh, so I would probably stick to like a 6. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about you for the system? For the system, I'm going to give it a solid 7. Just because, you know, I logged into my Google account and I had everything. My home address, my office address, my, my preferences. You know, if I could ask it to call someone from my contacts, it can do that. And uh, which, you know, which is something really basic, which many OEMs tend to kind of suffer with. So I think that that is, yeah, this is where we again go back to the debate of data privacy or not. But yeah, that's a never ending debate. So for me, it's a solid six and a half for the system. I love how snappy it is. It is still a little difficult to use from the periphery, in my opinion, simply because everything is so touch focused. But I love that Renault has given a bunch of buttons and the buttons below to control the climate control. Uh, you know, when you have to do the basic system controls from the touch screen, you're really taking attention away from the driver. So, brownie points to Renault for that. So, my verdict is that really Renault took uh, their effort to check the basics off for the average car buyer, even who's not an enthusiast, the basics are ticked off. So, really brownie points to Renault for that. We have a new vehicle coming every three weeks. Um, if you'd like to check out our in detail infotainment and HMI analysis, please visit screenstudio.com. And yeah, see you in the next one. It's been a pleasure, Tom, one. and Shavas. It's been a pleasure. See you and hit that subscribe button.